I'm currently the chair of the Wyndham World Affairs Council and uh, thank you so much everybody for coming here today. Uh, this is a really great event. It is a lovely, lovely locale for it and thanks to Amanda for volunteering her farm for us. I, uh, yeah, round of applause for that. Thank you. Uh, I would like to introduce my fellow board members right now. Uh, this is Maya Segura, who uh, put in a tremendous amount of work to get this party together. So thank you, Maya. Um, Tom French, one of our very established board members. He's been here for a very long time. Uh, Paul Love, also a very established board member. Uh, Tamara Sten, who is one of our new board members. Julie Snorek, hello. <laughs> and Amanda Thurber Ellis, whose farm this is, I'm sure many of you know her. She's a fairly new board member as well. And Lissa Weinman, uh, our, our very own, who's yeah. been here for quite some time as well. Thank you so much. We have uh, a few um, lifetime contribution certificates to give out, and I will turn it over to Lissa to announce those. Thank you all for coming. Hi, everybody. I'm Lissa Weinman. I've been on the Wyndham World Affairs Council board for almost eight years, which is probably illegal and breaking the board rules, but it's been great. And it's been great working with these wonderful people and people who care about what's happening in the world and take our responsibility as citizens in the United States to pay attention and to also advocate and to get involved in our foreign policy. Um, the Wyndham World Affairs Council was formed on the 22nd of March, 1961. In the flush of enthusiasm at the end of the World War and the creation of the United Nations. So the group has always been infused with a kind of optimism about what's possible. And um, I, I think we've all, in, over the years, in many different ways, tried to be part of that. Um, we have a lot of history to this organization. And I just want to mention that the, f the founding members were um, U.S. Senator George Aiken, U.S. Ambassador Ellsworth Bunker, a um, uh, psychologist and foreign policy aficionado, Hildegard Durfee. Um, Arthur Westing was a very important figure in history. I could you know, speak volumes and, and refer you to many books about these people and their activities, but I think the point here is that the group is founded on some um, very interesting people throughout the years and continues to be today. Um, so I just wanted to mention some of those um, people that have been part of the group for a long time. Um, and today, we're going to be recognizing uh, a few people who have made special contributions in recent years. Uh, Javed Chowdhury cannot be here today because he is uh, ill. Um, but he will be back soon. And he's been responsible for bringing many of us into the Wyndham World Affairs Council, an early Marlboro College uh, graduate from Pakistan. He stayed here most of his life um, and has been a driving force in our membership throughout the years and also adds that old world touch um, to everything that he does but is thoroughly modern at the same time. So thank you Javed Chowdhury and we'll be giving him his service award um, when we next see him. I know he sends his regards to all. Um, Likewise, uh, I want to say that uh, Jody Williams was supposed to be here today, um, but she is unable to attend. Um, she uh, is now here in Brattleboro, actually living in Putney again, um, and is very excited about working with the Wyndham World Affairs Council. 
on a program with uh, Brattleboro Union High School that will focus on um, peace, not just peace, but elements of what real human security looks like um, and how we spend 60% of our federal budget on the military and armaments and what does it get us. So we'll be working with Jody um, in the year ahead and she sends her, her deep regret. She was excited about coming and talking about the work we'll be doing together, which is being led by Amanda Thurber, our new board member at the high school. Um, so I just wanted to uh, send Jody's regrets um, and we are gonna miss her here today. But there'll be other opportunities to be with her in the future and most importantly, we'll be actually using her as a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize um, to inspire young people in our area today. So I wanna give a hand actually to Jody Williams for her work with Landmines and also for being a stand-up citizen um, from Brattleboro, a native girl. Um, the next uh, service award, oh, here it is, um, is going to Isak and Rose Shaul, who are here with us today. And Isak and Rose, first of all, you know, our board meetings have been amazing because of the food. I mean, between Javed and Rose, and it's just been incredible. So we always have wonderful food at, at our events. and. Uh, Rose and Isak over the last few years have really taken Wyndham World Affairs Council to some new levels. We had 16 events, all free, all wonderful speakers from everything from Ir Iran to uh, the Uyghurs in China and inequality and uh, Jews in ancient China. I mean, we've been all over the map, uh, Arthur Megiddo and his spy uh, novels and anyway. Um, Rose and Isak have done a lot to fortify Wyndham World Affairs Council in recent years. Uh, they stepped down last year. Um, but this is uh, an award in their honor, Isak and Rose. And I'd like to in invite you to say a word about why you care about Wyndham World Affairs and continue to be involved, actually. Go. Greetings. It is so wonderful to see so many great members of our community. Uh, we managed to. Uh, run the Wind Humboldt Affair Council for five years with greatest pleasure and greatest honor. Uh, the purpose of our involvement was to bring as much of truth about world and international development, international crisis, and to the community and let the people in the community really get the right feeling and the truth about the world, the countries, and all the events that are taking place. And we brought as many speakers to cover these issues as we could. And my dear wife here did most of the work and she is my boss. Well, we, we, we enjoyed our time very much while we were involved in this. And uh, it just so happened that the, just before the pandemic, I had a little mishap, I had an accident, and so I sort of stepped aside, and I was so pleased that so many people stepped in and managed to run things with Zoom and every kind of uh, idea that they could, and the new leadership is wonderful, and look what they organized for today. Isn't it wonderful to be here and celebrate together? Thank you. And uh, here's a little gift that all of our recipients are getting, and it's some uh, local uh, stuff. So thank you so much. And our, uh, our third award here tonight, but not last but not least, um, um, the service award presented to the Galbraith family because um, as probably most of you know, John Kenneth Galbraith was a very important public uh, intellectual economist who really defined uh, sort of the quintessential liberal uh, approach where the economy should feed the needs of the people. Um, he was just an incredible writer. He wrote, what, uh, close to 40 books 
thousands and thousands of articles and really defined an American spirit that uh, has been lost to a large degree, except for the work of his sons, um, Peter Galbraith, who is with us here today. Um, as as well as his brother, J Jamie. Jamie is not James, it's always Jamie, right? Jamie Galbraith at uh, University of Texas, Austin, who as an economist has in many ways carried on his father's um, great work um, as an author and as a professor and as someone who's willing to really tr speak truth to power about inequality in the United States today. So. Um, Jamie's included in this uh, Galbraith Family Award, too, even though he's not with us right now. But um, Peter is. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Peter Galbraith, uh, like his father, he is also a, a prolific writer, a diplomat, a politician. Um, his resume goes on and on. He started uh, in Senate Foreign Relations Committee for many years. He knows foreign policy inside out. Um, he was, uh, let me see if I can read my, my own notes here, very, uh, the first U.S. ambassador to Croatia um, and helped broker the end to that war. Um, he was, particip he participated in the East Timor government, the transition government there. He's been a long advocate of the Kurds, um, made us first aware of the uh, Saddam Hussein's gassing of the Kurds and has stood by the Kurds ever since. Um, was a good friend to Benazir Bhutto um, I, I guess you met at Harvard, um, and was, you know, very, uh, an intimate of hers, and, um, has just been through so much. U.S. Deputy Special Envoy to Afghanistan, who, um, in 2009, ex largely exposed the fraud that was taking, um, place in those first elections, um, and got fired as a result, and, uh, it was a real point of principle for him um, that I think now we look back and see exactly what was occurring all along. Um, Peter also is a great writer. He's written two books. Um, he served as a U.S. Uh, a Vermont state senator uh, from 2011 to 2015. I must say that his tenure was marked by a lot of c courage regarding uh, his position that Vermont should remove outside contributions, political contributions from the political process here, and nobody went with him. So that was a real, you, know, I, you, you went up many notches in my esteem for that fight, Peter. I know it was not an easy thing being up there, but it, you were fighting the good fight there. Um, at any rate, uh, John Kenneth Galbraith uh, also wrote the, the Affluent Society, so much of what he, talked about we're dealing with today as ambassador to India way back then. I'm talking about John Kenneth now. Sorry, I, I just forgot to say those things um, I wanted to say. Um, but at any rate, Peter, have I forgotten anything? <laughs> okay, so uh, let's hear from Peter Galbraith right now. And Peter, thank you and the Galbraith family for all your years of dedication to the Wyndham World Affairs Council. Thank you for this award. I, I want to say how much it means to me. Uh, and uh, I also want to thank the board and Amanda for this uh, lovely place and party. Uh, you know, the, the Wyndham World Affairs is, the Wyndham World Affairs Council is a very special organization. Uh, I, in, before the pandemic, I, I periodically give uh, lectures uh, uh, for the Harvard Alumni Association on their trips. Now that really is the definition of a junket. Uh, and it was to Madagascar, and don't ask my expertise on the fauna uh, and flora of Ab Madagascar, except I could say that's a lemur uh, when I saw one. Uh, but any anyway, of one of the guests on the trip was the head of the World Affairs Councils in, in Washington, D.C. And we had a very nice discussion about this World Affairs Council, which is the smallest World Affairs Council in the United States. Imagine <laughs> there is, there is, you know, there, there's the Vermont World Affairs Council and the Wyndham World Affairs Council in our small state. There isn't a Chittenden World Affairs Council or any other county, uh, and there's not, there's just nothing like it. It's the only uh, organization 
World Affairs Council that is entirely volunteer. Um, and, it, and so everybody here really is the reason that it's a success. I, I have to say, because I'm very partial to Wyndham County and the place our family's been since 1947, it's quite a bit of time now, um, that it also is a reflection of this really extraordinary community. And, and the only correction I'll make in the introduction is actually that I didn't begin my career with the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, but teaching at Wyndham College. Uh, some people would say that's better forgotten, but nonetheless. Um, and, you know, as I, uh, it, and so about the Galbraith family, every year my father gave a, a lecture. And then uh, at a certain point, I picked up the baton, uh, really very happily. Uh, I think it began with the, uh, I think he always had a, probably a more cheery set of topics than I did, because I began with the, the Bosnia War, which was then ongoing and moved on to Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria. Um, it's, it's, every year for me, it's the same issue because there's always something new and usually depressing about these subjects. But uh, it, is, it has been very much for 60 years a, a, a Galbraith family uh, obligation, a happy obligation to participate. And I suppose there have been at least 50 uh, lectures. And I, I just want you to know because, well, uh, uh, you know, we're all getting on. Uh, although I'm very pleased uh, at the transition into a much younger board, at least from my point of view. Uh, Tom, uh, you know, of course you are continuing, but um, the, uh, uh, but there are, there is a, a, a third generation of Galbraiths. My nephew and his wife are both Foreign Service officers. His wife has just been promoted to the Senior Foreign Service. Uh, which means there will be a third generation of Ambassador Galbraiths to come and, uh, and to lecture as the Wyndham World Affairs uh, Council continues. Um, I, was, uh, I, I just wanted to say there, there were many lectures, but there were a couple of moments here um, that were very special. And the, uh, Lisa, you alluded to it, a lecture I gave, I think it was like November 9th, 2009, about Afghanistan. Uh, I had been recalled, which is diplo speak for fired, um, for having thought that and tried to do something to prevent the, the fraud in the Afghanistan presidential elections. And there was a lot of retaliation. Uh, and when I arrived at the church to give the talk, there was a petition, which I still have, of support signed by everybody. I was like, must have been 100 names. It was really a very special moment. So I, I was very grateful and, and moved by that. Uh, and I was asked just to say a couple of words about Afghanistan, and I, uh, I've been talking about it pretty much nonstop for the last uh, uh, three weeks, uh, and I could go on for hours, but I know that isn't the point. But what I said then was that the strategy we had wouldn't work because it was a counterinsurgency strategy and it depended on having a local partner. And when your partner, namely the Afghan government and military, is corrupt, ineffective, and illegitimate as a result of fraudulent elections, you don't have a partner. And fraudulent elections are actually quite important and they're related to corruption because basically if you steal an election, that's what enables you to steal everything else. And of course, if you're beholden to corrupt power brokers who put you in power, you have no possibility of cracking down on corruption. Um, I won't give a long discourse on the subject. I just consider what has happened to be an enormous tragedy. Um, uh, you know, I think of the, Af the internationals with whom I worked in Afghanistan. Uh, I think of the, the military, uh, not the generals, because they're the people I hold most responsible. They knew that their strategy wasn't going to work and they persisted, they tried to alter the facts. But the, you know, the men and women who served in our armed forces are diplomats. And one thing about Joe Biden, whenever he talks about it, I hope you notice this, he says, I thank our troops and I thank our diplomats because they're on the front line and in many ways uh, 
uh, you, we've had a higher ra a casualty rate among diplomats than among our military. In, in, so I'm, I'm really fortunate that, that our president thinks that way. Uh, but, you know, that, that such an effort went into this place, uh, and there's absolutely nothing to show for it. Um, the Taliban are back. Uh, they may be a little milder than what they were, but what we sought to accomplish wasn't at a cost of $2 trillion, so many lives lost, so much effort. Um, you know, I, I, I just will say one further thing. I made my first trip to Afghanistan on February 14th, 1989. My friend Benazir Bhutto was Prime Minister of Pakistan, and I said I'd like to go in. And so she arranged it with the Pakistan Inner Services Intelligence. That happened to be the day that the Soviets completed their withdrawal. The Soviet installed government lasted three more years. In fact, it lasted longer than the Soviet Union. We called it the puppet government. The American sponsored government didn't even last to the end of the, um, of the American withdrawal. The last two weeks of the American withdrawal took place with the Taliban in control in, in Kabul. And I, I say this because I think it comes back to the mission of the World Affairs Council to have intelligent citizens, intelligent discussion of, of foreign policy so that we don't keep making these kinds of very costly mistakes. So again, uh, on behalf of the Galbraith family and thinking of my father, uh, who was such a figure in this community, on my own behalf, on behalf of my brother, thank you. Yeah, the, I, I was reviewing the mission, the founding mission of the Wyndham World Affairs Council um, to uh, promote understanding of world affairs, to stimulate effective participation in world affairs issues, um, and to promote responsible citizen participation in the foreign policy of the United States. So that's kind of where we're at, folks. Um, I'd like to invite anybody that wants to share anything at this time and come up, you know, the, the microphone can be kept live. Um, and if there's anybody in the audience, because so many of you have been here through the years, but fantastically, many of you are also new. So thank you for joining the Wyndham World Affairs Council and being here today. Um, so we invite anybody to come up. Is there anything else, you guys, at this moment? Any last minute stuff we need to say? I'm going to turn it over to fellow board member Maya Segura. Great. Thank you all again for being here. It's such an incredible turnout. We're so fortunate to be here on Amanda's farm. And um, we're just so thrilled to see so many people in one place in such a, a safe environment and, and people that do still have a passion for world affairs. And so thank you. Um, we, I'm a fairly new board member. I joined a year ago during the pandemic, and um, it has been just really kind of a whirlwind in a lot of ways to get to know my fellow board members and to be able to work on events like Peter Galbraith's and um, Tamara Stens and um, also uh, our friends Brad and Willow's event, Sisters Rising, um, the film that they created, which we just had a, a couple of weeks ago. And I'm really excited about this board because they are looking at globalization and, and um, world affairs in a very broad way and, um, you know, not sort of just looking at what our foreign policy is, but looking at how our neighbors are affecting global policy and global affairs um, all over the world. And um, I did want to introduce um, Brad and Willow, um, who um, created this amazing film, Sisters Rising, that is very American, but also very global in its scope and its urgency. And we're just so pleased that young filmmakers like Brad and Willow live in our community and are taking on these gargantuan issues. And um, we just kind of wanted to know from your perspective why you were willing to 
be a part of this event that you did with us. I love that we still get to be called young. I know. I was, it's like such yeah. a Vermont thing. We moved to Vermont four years ago from We're going to be young until we're like in our 70s. I know. We would have not been young filmmakers in Brooklyn. <laughs> Maya, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wanna, I also, I just want to warn you. I had, I've been moving gravel all day, and then I had a lady finger and then an apple pie. Yes, sir. And then I went back and for another. Torn. It's very almond, different. Not a lay, okay. And then I went Way back for another almond lady. bar, and so I'm pretty much fueled by sugar at this point. So just raise your hand if you can't keep up with me, and I'll slow down <laughs> and try again. Um, we're documentary filmmakers. We focus mostly on uh, documentaries about that involve issues of social justice. Um, we very much believe in the words of Adrian Marie Brown, who said that art is not neutral. It either upholds or disrupts the status quo, advancing or regressing justice. Um, we, we do different forms of activism, but probably the most sustained form of activism that we do is through our filmmaking. Um, and one of the reasons that we love documentary filmmaking is because um, we are driven by this curiosity. Um, and I think this belief that ultimately a lot of the world's problems, and this is reductive, but a lot of the world's problems can be solved or at least addressed through empathy. And we strongly believe that by connecting people, connecting people's stories, exposing people to experiences that they have not yet had or that they are unfamiliar with, that that is the first, that those are the seeds of empathy which eventually will lead to collaboration, which will eventually will lead to hopefully disrupting the status quo. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons I was so honored, I mean, I'm honored to be on the stage with all of the honorees today, but I think it's another reason that we were honored to be approached by Maya, um, learn more about the council and be hosted by the council because I see a lot of what drives the council being that same curiosity and that same bridge building um, to, to allow empathy to carry us across, um, have new experiences, and hopefully disrupt the status quo. Um, I don't know if you want to... You, Brad, I was, I, I'm was mad at Brad because he totally stole what I was going to say. He I said that, he would talk first too. and then I would say things. But I was going to say that curiosity, empathy, and inquisitiveness is the cornerstone of documentary filmmaking. And obviously, it's what the Wyndham World Affairs Council is all about as well. Yes, that's what I was going to say. And Brad totally stole my thunder. And Next time you go first. <laughs> um, but... For those of you who didn't attend Sisters Rising, our documentary feature um, that the World Affairs Council hosted, um, it's about Native American women uh, restoring personal and tribal sovereignty in the face of ongoing sexual and colonial violence. Native American women are the most um, raped demographic of women in the United States, and largely by non-Native men, mostly white men, um, obviously a continuation of colonialism and racism ongoing, and also the fact that uh, Native women, well, tribes in the U.S. don't have equal um, legal authority and jurisdiction over non-Native people. When a non-Native person commits a serious crime on Native land, uh, the tribal courts and tribal cops cannot apprehend them for criminal um, charges. And that's something that we're hoping to change with Sisters Rising, because most Americans don't actually know about this. So. You can't change something you don't know about. So that's the, our mission with the doc. And we are just really grateful that the World Affairs Council hosted. It was the, we released our documentary at the end of, our world premiere at Big Sky in Montana was the end of February in 2020. 2019. 2020, yes, yes. And then, you know, the pandemic hit. It was a great premiere and then the pandemic hit and all of our plans went up poof and everything became virtual screenings, which was great. But um, the World Affairs gave us the first live screening that we've had since our premiere, world premiere. So that was really, really special to sit with our hometown crowd in Brattleboro um, at 118 Elliott. Thanks, Lissa. And, you know, just feeling the energy in the room and the getting to talk to people. It's really what, you know, it's all about. The work is about. So, um, and my last comment is just that if someone could please tell me why New Englanders, I'm from Northern California originally, they paint their balcony roofs blue. I need to know. I've been asking around. <laughs> That's so good. That's awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank We're you. really grateful to have you guys around. I hope the World Affairs Council lasts forever until the planet's demise. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Alice. So, thank you.
thank you, you guys. Um, so we actually, we're so excited that Javed and Yasmin were able to join us after all today. So um, we will talk to Javed in just one quick second, but while we're working him through his adoring crowd, um, I wanna tell you about a couple of events that are coming up this fall. Um, we actually, another, uh, so this is our 60th anniversary, as you know, and thank you again for being here to celebrate this incredibly momentous um, event with us. Uh, the Brattleboro Literary Festival is also celebrating a big year this year. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary of their festival, and they're still working out exactly what the, um, I guess the, the mode of the festival will be this year, but it, it, it will go on one way or another. And I'm excited to say that the Wyndham World Affairs Council will be um, sponsoring one of the authors. And Claire is in charge of choosing which one, and she is having a terrible time deciding. And whatever it, whoever it is, it's gonna be absolutely incredible because their lineup of international writers is really phenomenal and the issues that they're tackling are, are, um, are big, of course. So look for an announcement about that in October. And then in November, um, Ian Diamondstone is a local gentleman who is a, uh, socially responsible spice trader. And we thought that in honor of the holiday season and all the savory things that happen then, um, it's good for us to remember to take a little bit of time to savor the, the spice in life and also to remember to be really mindful about how we're consuming and how we are connecting with different parts of the world that we're totally connected to. So with that, um, I will say, please become a member. Um, we provide all of our programming for free, and we're the only um, World Affairs Council that does that in the entire country. And we would love to have more of you and your thoughts and your energy. So I really encourage you to become a member, or renew your membership. And um, we're gonna hand it over to one of the OGs here. And uh, Lissa, um, we're so happy to see Javed here. He's busy. And um, so, yay, thank you, Lissa. Well, he's our Jefe Maximo, Javed Chowdhury. He's, uh, he goes fishing a lot in the area and he comes up with uh, candidates for the board. Um, that's how many of us were found ourselves involved in Wyndham World Affairs Council, um, even as, as late as Amanda now is here, thanks to Javed's advocacy and his fishing expeditions to find people who he feels um, would benefit the community by being involved in Wyndham World Affairs Council. So he's a 1965 Marlboro College graduate, and one must recognize the role that Marlboro College has played in the Wyndham World Affairs Council. Walter Hendricks, many others um, throughout the years um, came through Marlboro College. It's a great blow to the community not to have it here anymore. Um, but hopefully organizations like ours can keep uh, doing some of that kind of work in the community. Um, likewise, the School for International Training and the Experiment in International Living. Um, so, so important in, in crafting the international identity of this area and so, so sad to see their presence um, diminished in recent years. But so many people involved in those institutions are committed uh, here to, for the long term, so we will still benefit in years to come. Um, and thanks to Javed Chowdhury for all his work over many, many years. He's an international business executive. Um, he's a keen state professor. Um, he originally hails from Pakistan and has done an enormous amount for us to understand um, the relations between Pakistan and the United States. So, Javed, would you say a few words, please, when you accept our service award? Yeah, thank you. I was expecting a watch. First of all, I, I'm so totally overwhelmed to see something like this happening. It's been a dream for many years, 
that more and more members of the community would be part of uh, the World Affairs Council. And uh, I'd have had my eyes on Amanda for a long time. <laughs> and this is just perfect, because this is what uh, uh, Brattleboro is about and Wyndham, Wyndham County is about. I, I just wanted to uh, recall the memory of my first um, attendance at the World Affairs Council event. It was uh, in late winter, 1961. I'd just come, come over from, the, from Pakistan, and um, uh, that was the year that the peace had been declared and an arrangement had been made between the Australians and the UN and the Indonesians regarding New Guinea. And the Wyndham World Affairs Council arranged a talk by Professor Ellsworth Bunker, whose family has been one of the founding families of Wyndham World Affairs. And Tom Regal, the great Tom Regal, the president of Marlborough College, um, whom we called, uh, whom we, he said was the youngest college president in the US at that time, uh, decided he would show me off uh, to take me to the uh, event. And I arrived there and he said, dress up very well, I want you to make an impression. So I wore the Pakistani national dress with the frock coat and the uh, official dark, what we call an achkan, uh, a black frock coat. And we arrived there and um, I was the only foreigner in the entire group. But it was marvelous. Uh, the ambassador spoke exceptionally well. And I think that's where my own interest in, in the World Affairs Council began and in international relations. And I've never forgotten that evening. And I've always followed what's been happening with the World Affairs Council, no matter where I've lived all these years. And I've wanted so much to involve the um, academic community uh, in the area. The, the, We've been so rich until recently in having so many colleges and institutions, academic institutions, in, in the tri-state area. It's a shame that we've lost Marlborough and almost SIT and Southern Vermont College and uh, several other colleges. It's, it's one of the greatest losses to, to our society and to our country that uh, higher education has gone that way. But there's still people left. and. Lissa and I, and Lissa more than I, have tried to reach out to even younger people to the high school. And I think we should, I would ask many of you who have children in high school or uh, in, in below college level or even in community college, to encourage your children to attend our events. Uh, we, we did that about five years ago when we had several um, international students at the high school and we did, I think, one or two events for the high school, very well attended, and they were just marvelous to see young children who we, we don't give a thought to. We, we think they lead very narrow lives, but they're very aware of the world, and for them to be involved with the foreign students and to listen to what the foreign students had to say, and some of the, some of the things they said were quite startling, quite, quite radical, but to listen to them and to, to uh, watch them get interested was absolutely wonderful. And what we did, what Wyndham Welfare's Council did at that time was we invited um, uh, a lady, what's the market, the, market, the lady from New York. Uh, you mean the UN ambassador? Yes. You are, you are UN, I can't remember. Madeline Albright? No, not Madeleine Albright. But it was the she's, U.S. She's she's my, associate. You're an associate. Um, Gilly Martin. That was her name. Gilly Martin, whose boyfriend had been at Marlborough College. And she went in to get, marry someone in Kennedy's ca cabinet. She was um, the, the uh, New York City's ambassador to the U.N. She came to give a talk at the Window Well Affairs Council and then went to the high school and I was surprised to see 100 
BUHS high school students attend that event and to be deeply involved in what she had to say and even challenged her on several issues. And this, this, there's a lot of wealth, of, there's a lot of intellectual wealth in a community that we're not aware of. So I would encourage you to reach out to friends, to family, particularly at this time, at a time when we need to reach out to talk more about diplomacy, about our country's role in the world today. I think after the events of the past month or a month and a half, it's, we are very aware that all of us who have been anti-war have fought very much against the aggressive actions of not only our own, our own country, but others as well. We've, we've discovered how important diplomacy is and an awareness of the roles of nations and individuals and organizations in peaceful changes in this world. Please do indeed come to the events, become members. We desperately need paying members. Our inflation has hit us very hard. In 15 years, uh, we've had to raise membership fees from $5 a head to $50 a head. Families. Families. That's a lot. Many of us prefer, prefer not to ask for money at all. Many of you give money without asking. Uh, the, the best example is my friend, Milt Eaton. Every time he comes to an event, he says, have I paid my dues? <laughs> and I always know he pays on time, and I tell him no. <laughs> and he promptly writes out a check. <laughs> so the cat is out of the bag. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming today. Please continue. And I'd just like to end one more thing. I have indeed looked very hard for people to join our board. I'm excited over the board that we have. This is the youngest board ever in the history of Wyndham World Affairs Council. And it's time for these young people. I, I, I say that with kindness. Not, not, not in an obnoxious way, but it's time for them to lead us. And that's why I urge you, reach out to as many young people as you can, because history has yet to be made in this country. We're still very young, and we can make history by changing minds. Fortunately, we live in a very, very wonderful part of the United States, a very liberal part of the United States. And we've got to keep that liberalism going. We've got to expand it. We've got to reach out to people whose minds have closed through uh, the, the deterioration of education over the past half century or so. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, my name is Peter Sears, and uh, I'm a former uh, board member and chair of the council and um, a friend and colleague and admirer of Javed for many years. And uh, I just want to add a little appreciation of my own to uh, Javed, uh, who, as you, many of you know, is, is active in the interfaith community and in the interfaith council in our area. And um, I just want to get it on record that it, um, in the days after 9-11, when there was so much fear and anger and confusion, ignorant, ignorance about uh, the Muslim faith, um, Javed made a point of um, putting on tr his traditional um, uh, garb, I might say, his, his uh, dress, and being out on the street and um, identifying himself as a, of that faith and inviting anybody who might want to say anything, ask any questions, or get to talk to somebody uh, of that faith, he, um, they were more than welcome to come and, uh, and, and speak to him. And I, I think in, in those days, which was 
uh, as I said, there was a lot of fear, confusion, and anger. I thought it was, it was a, goes without saying, it, it was a brave thing to do and extremely compassionate, and uh, I, I, I will never forget it. And um, he's a wonderful man. Jo uh, Javid, it's also fallen to me to present you with this bag. A watch, finally? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you so much to all of our presenters. Uh, I would like you to get back to enjoying the food. I would like to encourage you to eat as much of the food as humanly possible. And I want to reiterate uh, what others have said about joining the board. If there's a conversation that you want to see happening in this community, um, this is absolutely your chance to make it happen. And uh, if you could join me in raising a glass to everybody, that would be great. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. All right. Thank you.
Didgeridoo, a slide didgeridoo, and we also have a djembe from Africa. And sometimes we also play with a tabla, but they didn't make it out here today.
Oh, thank you. So, uh, my name is Joe, and my last name is Wea. Um, I never knew about this program, but rather through a good friend of mine, Karen. Um, and so I came to check it out, and I realized how wonderful this program is. And I currently work for SEFCA um, as one of the housing case managers. But well, pretty soon I will be um, heading a program for the uh, Ethiopian um, Community Development Council. And that program um, aim is to settle refugees within Widom County. So it was a wonderful time to meet you know, the Widom uh, War Affairs um, Council and see the key players that are in the area and see how we can collaborate. Um, I'm Amanda Ellis Thurber. I am Ross Thurber. And we are the owners and operators of Lilac Ridge Farm. We've had the pleasure of hosting the Wyndham World Affairs 60th anniversary party. It was a lovely event that brought together people who have been bringing international issues, topics, news, education to our community for 60 years. And it was a privilege to host it. Yes. That, that sounds good. That's all we need to say. Okay. Yeah.